What's up guys, Shretna Beats here, and in this video I will be showing you another remake and how I made it. Um, it is the beat from a live stream of Southsides where he was roasting 6 9 and um, in that live stream TM88 was playing this beat in the background. requested to do this by a viewer um, so I remade the beat and uploaded it the same day like two hours after he requested it and um, on that video like five people have asked me to do a tutorial on how I did it and it's actually pretty simple um, like the last video where I showed how to remake a beat it is basically the same workflow um, I will start off by downloading the uh, live stream of YouTube and then putting that in FL Studio. So let's just do that. So go find the video on YouTube, then copy the URL, go over to ytmp3.cc, paste in the URL, press convert, and then it will start converting the video. It might take a little while, but when it is done loading the video and converting it, just press the download button. So once you downloaded the video from YouTube, throw the mp3 file into FL Studio. The next thing you want to do is, um, for this specific beat, find the sample. I sampled it from the original video as I have no idea where the sample is from, if it even is a sample. It might be a private Qbeats or Palace sample um, that no one else has access to. So the only way to do this properly is to just take it out from the actual video um, so I found a section here 55 seconds into the mp3 file where the loop is playing for itself um, in a decent quality so I took it from here And then you just want to cut this uh, cut this out so it will the loop will end right before the 808 from the actual beat drops and as soon as the um, sample starts playing and I have already done that I have the sample right here The next thing I went to do with the sample was to tweak it a bit to make it sound uh, better um, because it was pretty, it was a decent quality from the original mp3 but I wanted it to sound more, more authentic, authentic and nice. So I went ahead and EQ'd it a bit, um, I took a bit of the highs, high ends out of the frequencies because when you record something like Southside did. Um, high, higher frequencies will usually be even higher uh, on a playback like this so I just took a bit of them out and boosted the 400 Hertz and took a bit more of the lows out then I went ahead and used a stereo shaper which can be found under presets here right over here and on that I just boosted the left and right section like 0 0.5 or minus 6 db as you can see in the left upper corner here i boosted it about minus 6 decibels on both sides and then boosted the mid like 1.5 or 1.6 um, then i eq'd some more highs out and a bit of the lows out i used this preset called 20 hertz plus 18k cut and then i just took it out like this then another eq um, which I use to automate throughout the beat. <coughs> um, sometimes I have it like kind of off um, here in the beginning where only the melody is playing. I, then I want some 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 low ends in the uh, melody to make it sound wider and bigger. Um, but when the beat drops, I want to cut the lows out so my 808 can stand out, of course. And then I added a sound goodizer with the preset C and like five 
for what is this six glows like six lights out and this made it sound like an actual sample and not something taken from the video as you can hear so yeah now we had the um, the sample so now we have to make the drums so to make the drums you will need to find a loop from the actual video where the beat is playing by itself so you can hear which uh, what the patterns are so I'm gonna drag the um, original video in again and then you need to find a section where the beat is playing for itself And then just cut that piece out and make it fit into um, the same, the, like the uh, the eight bars you have. And when you've done that, then you can start to layer the drums on top of that. I already have done that. Um, found a loop section right here. It fits nicely into the eight bars here. And then I just started to figure out which instruments he used. Um, for the 808, it was pretty clear to hear that he used the Saito 808. And uh, on the clap, I just chose like the most used clap by 808 Mafia, the Luger clap. And the hi-hat, I chose the, um, usually Southside and TM88 uses the Hit One hi-hat, but this one was a bit more crisp and, and deep kind of, so I, it, I figured it was the Saitoven 808, or I mean Saitoven hi-hat. I took a bit of the out knob, I, I took that up a bit to make it shorter, more crisp. And for the snare, I'm pretty sure, I'm not really sure which exact snare he used, but this sounded much alike the one used. And um, I just took this from the root key C5 to um, D here to make it a bit lower originally it sounds like this I made it sound like like that um, by taking it the root key to D5 and um, then I chose the 808 Mafia open hat which they pretty much always use as well um, so now it was just time to make the patterns so to start off while I was making the patterns I wanted to make the 808 first as it was pretty simple and straightforward um, so to hear the exact key of the 808 I went into the drum loop from the actual video and I pitched this up 12 semitones Then you can hear exactly what the key of the 808 is. Um, so if I just take the 808 out here. This doesn't sound particularly good, but you can, if you go into the 808 and take it like two octaves up. Then you can really start to hear what the key of the 808 is. So if I turn this off. So that is pretty much the pattern of the 808. It just keeps going like this. Um, from F to C to D sharp. It just goes like that for like seven bars. And on the last couple bars, they go up to C, like right as the loop ends. Like that. So that was the 808 pattern. The clap was pretty sim simple as it just hit at the normal spot every bar. And the uh, snare hit every um, on top of the clap every time. But um, at like the f second bar, the snare was a bit brighter. So I just put it in C-sharp to make it a bit brighter and it hit right here before the clap. And 
again right after the clap but like at the normal key and uh, I just copy pasted that to the next part of the loop as well so now I had to do the hi-hats and the hi-hats for this beat was very interesting as it was kind of off beat um, and hit in very weird positions as you can hear here <laughs> So sometimes when um, I am doing the hi-hats, what I like to do is go in the drum loop and uh, put an EQ on it and take the lows out. In that way I will be able to hear the hi-hats more clearly and take out the 808. As you can hear the hi-hat stands much more out and um, the 808 is not in the way. So now I just had to figure out how that pattern was. So the hi-hat pattern starts out with a short roll in a lower pitch and then it goes up with a another roll but one of the hi-hats is in a higher key. And then there is um, there are these small um, it's not a roll exactly but the hi-hat hitch hits very shortly after the first one and creates this funny bounce to it like here. Tick, tick, tick. So these are used very much throughout the pattern. Um, and then there are some rolls here and there. For example, here there is a roll where it was made in a fourth step. And then it progresses to end. Like it is pretty much split up in two bars for every um, part of the loop where it goes like exactly the same. Um, where they have uh, at the end of the loop they have this the bounce thing where it like hits right before another one uh, which create creates a pretty funny sound um, not something that I'd ever thought of myself but like remaking these beats makes me figure out new ways to implement new new things into my own beats um, that so I can really recommend anyone out there to also try remaking beats um, but yeah, there are these funny endings to the loop and then they, it is pretty much copy pasted over and over again. And here we have a pretty funny roll as well. It has the bounce thing where it like plays a hi-hat again and then a hi-hat and quickly another one. And then it has this roll. And at the end there is another roll and that is pretty much it. So if we play my loop um, side by side with the original hi-hat, it pretty much sounds identical. So that is the hi-hats. So now I had to do the open hats. They were also pretty funny. Um, he used different keys for the uh, open hats uh, at different times and they were playing pretty often as we can hear. It can be a little hard to hear but um, there is a hi-hat playing in like the normal C key and then quickly after that there's like two um, open hat notes playing right after each other. So I of course did that and um, I can just throw that right under the original beat. And that was pretty much the whole beat. So now I had the drums and I had the sample. Now it was just time to, to structure it. And for that part, I was just kind of lazy. I just took the drum or the whole sample, the whole loop and just played it over and over again and then did the same thing like three times. Um, but at the end, I just turned down the volume gradually as the beat just faded away. Um, but the beat is super hard. Let's take a listen. <laughs> 